Hey everyone, Julian here today, gonna be showing you the secrets how to make classic jungle in Ableton. Don't miss guys, there's a lot of gems in here. I wish this video was around when I was first starting to make this stuff. Link to the entire template, all the samples, MIDI, presets, the whole project file you just heard is available at the top of the description on my website. Definitely go grab that, it really helps support me and it's gonna help you make the best tracks of your life and deconstruct the style and get going. Thanks for the support everybody, links at the top of the description and let's dive in. Alright, so we're at 168 BPM, right? Not fully 170 just yet. And I think that's the first thing. That groove, especially when it comes to, you know, the bass line. Against those drums. It's, it's like there's that little kind of magic you get when it's not quite 170 BPM. It's only 2 BPM off, I know. But it's like... There's just a certain feel to it, right? Especially over the course of like a whole track, you'll feel the difference, you know, with that little thing. So definitely, you know, honestly between like 160 and 170 is where I like to put the stuff. First thing we got up here is the bass line. Now, there's a very simple sound. It is literally just an 808 kick, right? Now, I'm trying to show you guys how they did it back in the day. We could sit here and synthesize this pretty easily, right, with Operator or something like that. But I wanted to go ahead and do it the way they were doing it back in the day. So, yeah, it's just like a classic 808 sample. You can see I tuned it. And then I've got a little bit of filter drive on that. You know, just to make it a little bit warmer and more analog. It's really more about the notes with this one, though. So what we're doing here is we're kind of jumping between two chords. Well, really between three chords, because we're going D sharp, and then up to this F sharp. And I guess it's four, because then we go C sharp, and then A sharp, right? So it's all in that D sharp minor scale, right? Like, if you were looking at this, it would be like root note, minor third, minor seventh, fourth. Excuse me, fifth. And really, it's just following where those pads are going. You can hear those harmonically fit together. But really, the thing with this is this eighth note groove, this do 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 kind of thing with the octaves. And when you make this, you know, it can seem daunting to kind of get that groove. The secret is that it's bouncing off of the drums. Like, these two really need to be working together. So, really what you want to do is get the drum break going. Like, just have fun, chop some breaks up, find a groove you like, and then write the bass line to that. It's really like, the bass line, although it might seem complicated on its own, it's very simple if you simply make it fit with what chords you're playing, right, with, like, your melodic elements, and then make it groove off of the drums, and this kind of a bass line will come together quick. I'm spending a lot of time on it because I know these can be confusing and when I used to hear these tracks, you know, I would try to do it with an 808 and it wouldn't quite get the same and it's because you need to understand that it's not about like what the 808 is doing, it's really what the drums are doing and then this is working with that. So if you're starting a track like this, really I would start with the drums and then do this bass. So, for the drums... Alright, so what's happening here is we've got these breaks. So it's really like this one is kind of like the main break, right? This is where we're getting our kick and our snare from. So it's this break, but what I'm doing is I'm chopping it in like kind of sections. Like, it's super chopped up. Like, the original sample is literally this. This is from that classic Jungle Warfare sample CD, by the way, that a lot of those tracks were made with back in the day. This break, the way this sounds, that's what a lot of these guys were working with and then kind of like, you know, processing it and it was getting pressed to vinyl and all this texture was getting added. But that's what I started with. And again, you can hear, you can just get like a solid kick and snare from that. And then what I did is I took it and just chopped it. Right, and we have this one following that. And they kind of come together and create one thing. And the secret to this is like very subtle filtering. With the one that's the kick and the snare, I'm low passing, I'm really just cutting off those like high highs. 
Because really all the punch that you want, like if we look at this on the spectrum here, you can really see it, where like the, the punch is happening down here, like where those two peaks are. So you don't need those hi-hats, especially if you're going to end up putting like an amen break or something like that over this. You could even do that if you really wanted to. But yeah, so I'm just bringing that down. And then on the amen. So it sounds like this. You can hear there's a lot of kick and snare in there, but there's also a lot of good highs. So I've got a little bit of drum bus to just kind of give it, again, like I said, like they were working with these really clean breaks, but then adding texture through like resampling them and putting them through different tape processes. So that's kind of what this emulates. Right, that sounds a lot more like 90s jungle. And then we're high passing it. So you're really just, this is almost like a top loop. But when you put these together and they're chopped at the same time doing the same things, you get this really fat compound break that's the best of both of them. Now, what's happening is it started with that, but it needs something a little more under it. Like this alone is a solid break, but it, to really get that jungle groove, it needed something a little bit more crazy. So then I added this. This is this chopped up Soul Pride, also from Jungle Warfare. Right, Soul Pride is like a famous James Brown break. I'm pretty sure I've got. It's just this like insane drum break from back in the day, right? But basically, this is like a chopped one. With all that percussion going crazy. So then I've got that. And then if you put that with the others, even if it's not playing at the same time, when the hits are kind of not lining up, like let's say there's a snare here while these are playing the hi-hats, you get a really nice groove. It goes from this to this. Right, and it adds that like hectic, insane kind of feel that really like, I think without that, it, it's a little bit too dry. It doesn't really feel like crazy jungle, right? So then on the group, you can see I got the saturator. It's not doing a whole lot. It's on the medium curve setting. So when you bring that in, it does make things a bit fatter. But then I'm blending it. It's just a little bit. Because if you do too much of that, you can definitely destroy these pretty easily. So we're just like 16%. All you need, just a little extra kind of emulating tape or something like that. And we got the brakes working together. Then we have the pad. So yeah, these are meant to be these like lush, kind of old school style of chords, right? Very like metal heads, kind of like 92 vibes. So what we're doing here is it's basically these, like this is a D-sharp minor chord. You know, pretty simple stuff. Just a triad, and then another root note, and a third, just doubling up these two, right? Then here we've got this like C-sharp major, but then we're adding in voices here, like this right here. Yeah, that's another root note, but then for the C-sharp major, that would be like the major sixth, right? And then we got, you know, this major seventh as well on there. So it's basically like different inversions of these chords. But then the other thing, so we're in the key of D sharp minor. Up top, we are droning the fifth. You can see we've just got this constant fifth playing up there. So that's a big part of it too. The fact that like every chord has that voice playing against it. So that's going to change how it sounds. And that's going to change. It's also going to help these chords kind of relate to each other. Like if you just do this. Right, they're all over the place, but then if you do this. See what I'm saying? It kind of like, you know, ties the whole thing together. For the actual sound on this, we're using two layers, and this is really meant to recreate. You know, back in the day, a lot of these pads and stuff were made with like the Korg M1 and these different kind of like romplers, like crazy samplers from back in the day where it was these patches with like, you know, there'd be like a string and then like an FM pad and then like animals caught like those things sound crazy, right? And if you have the Korg M1 VST, 
it can definitely be good for that. But also, there's a way to just get that same kind of layering pretty easily in Ableton. And what we're doing here is simply just layering together a string sample, which we're looping here, right? And I'm using the fade to make it really smooth, bit of reverb, high pass filter. And then we're layering that with an FM pad. Because again, like, I could just open up the Korg M1, make a pad, right, and call it a day. But I want to show you, like, this is what makes those patches. It's, like, when you hear those magical kind of old samplers, it's basically this. It's just how they, like, would have, like, these crazy patches. Because they were made by people that were just sitting there all day making patches. And then these guys were making tracks, and they would pull up these insane, very deeply synthesized sounds and create these beautiful pads. But yeah, so for the operator, what it is, you can see it really fits against the string, like on its own. It's a bit crazy, right? But then when you put it together. And that's what I learned. I went in M1 and I studied, like, what's happening and how those kinds of patches got made. And that's essentially it. It's like a lot of these FM synths that you hear. It's really because the FM is, like, fitting against something organic. Like on its own, it's very metallic and crazy, but it just fits so well. So with this, what we're doing is it's just sine waves, but they're at a lot of different octaves. That's how you get that kind of metallic thing, right? And they're detuned a little. I've got a little bit of an LFO on the volume of oscillator B, some chorus, reverb, high pass. And on the group, all we have is just a high pass filter. So that's one of those modern things to make sure that it's not going to get in the way of the drums or the bass. And then the last thing we got down here would be the vocals. <laughs> so we got these three different vocals, right? On their own, they're pretty simple. You know, not that crazy. Some of them I had to warp a little bit to get them really in time, right? You can see this one's pretty heavy. But, you know, it makes it work really well with the track. We got really just a bit of delay and reverb on those. I think what I want to show you is there's no magical vocal processing, right? Like, I'm sure if I made a video right now, ooh, perfect jungle vocal chain, a bunch of people would be like, whoa. But it's really just reverb and delay. It's not that much. I mean, maybe some overdrive or something like that, a bit of filtering at the end to clean it up. It's really about the vocal, though. It really is. Like, And I think that's the problem with all that vocal chain stuff is, like, it's not about what you're putting on it. It's like this vocal like has really cool notes in it. So if you put that into a long reverb, it creates something beautiful. Same thing with this. Like that just sounds good getting delayed and reverb. And I think it's really about getting really good vocals, not about the processing, you know? It really like, and then also how they're going to fit with all of this. Like, it's way more about that interaction harmonically than it is about, like, what you put on the vocals. <laughs> nice one. Alright, so that's going to be for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full template. Literally every single element is available at the top of the description on my website. Definitely don't miss out, guys. You can get this and really get started with these jungle tracks. I know it can be hard to understand at first, but this is really going to help you get where you're trying to get. Plus, it really helps support me. I don't make a whole lot off of YouTube. You guys would laugh if you saw the numbers. But with these sample packs, I'm able to keep going, keep bringing you guys new videos every single day, showing you stuff that's not out there that we all need to see. Thank you so much for the support, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.